what's up everybody this is part two of our q a relationship video hopefully everybody's doing good i'm still getting used to this um we're gonna start off with question 26 and go all the way to question number 50 so let's go ahead and get started uh number 26 what are some annoying habits of other couples that irritate you the most where do i even start like that cupcake phase where everything's like they can't like separate from each other's mouths. About? We did that same thing. I know, but it's different when you get through when you go through it. I'm just saying like every like, couple So does it's it. not annoying to us, but when you see other couples do it, it's annoying. That's like double standarding. How I feel. So who how bad is it that it annoys you when other people do it? It's not that bad, but I'm just like uh especially if you're like third <laughs> wheel all up in there. Oh, I just thought of one. Okay. Annoying habits of other couples that irritate you. Okay, so this has happened to me a couple times. Um, that a friend of mine has gotten to a relationship. They're in that cupcake phase, whatever. And we can't hang out alone because the other person, like you said, they just want to be together all the time. Like, it's supposed to be girl time, whatever time. And they're like, oh, can I go to the movies with you guys? Or, oh, can I lay in bed and watch a movie with you? Or whatever like there's just no space where it's me and the friend there has to be like that other person latching Ugh. and then in like in high school like when people are walking they're walking and then the guy's like behind the girl and then his hands are practically like just on her and then they both walk at oh, the yeah. same time like they're one person okay that's stupid 27. Who would you prefer as a partner? A good looking person or an extremely clever person? If I had to choose between the two. <laughs> You're like, oh, hot, but oh, clever? It's like so hard for you? Let's go with hot. You? I don't know because, like, okay, an example. Before I started watching Sherlock, I thought Benedict Cumberbatch was like so unattractive. I was just like, what the hell is everybody thinking? But then when I started watching Sherlock, he's just so like clever and intelligent. It just like makes him attractive. So I don't know, like the intelligence is just like awesome. So I think I would probably prefer someone more clever and slightly like unique average looking than someone who's super hot and they're just like a freaking jerk or something. What if they look like a foot, but they're super smart? Are you saying he looks like a foot? I'm not saying that. 28. How do so you... So, you would just prefer, like, the stupid hot person? Pretty much. That is so shallow. How, <laughs> how do you vent out your frustrations in a relationship? Very badly. <laughs> what? Okay, I do. explain. Because when I get frustrated, I either, one, cry, or two, I cry and, like, shout and get mad. Like, it's just, there's always crying involved. I just There's, like, a lot of crying and a lot of rambling. Like, I already talk a lot, but, like, even more excessive repeat, repetitive talking about the same thing over and over. I think I just kind of shut up and just not do anything at all. I just get <laughs> mad and just, like, fuck you, go away. 29. When was the last time I came in your dreams? Like, when, when was I in your dreams last? I guess that's the... What they yeah. Mean. Like, sometime earlier this week or something. I don't remember when the last time I told you was. Apparently the dream me... Still can't do that, Is right? a cheating host Is a, a jackass, apparently. He cheats in my dream, like, maybe three, four times a week. Every time. I don't know. And he's it's not, always... He's not me. It's always with some blonde chick. It's I don't even like a blonde. variation of blonde. Every time. I'm not even into blondes. And then every time I'm like, what? Why are you doing this? And you're like, I don't fucking care. Like, you just act like it's no big deal. You're like, sorry, we're breaking up. Like, you just do not care. I honestly don't remember the last time you were in a dream because I never remember my dreams. Well, fine. Don't ever dream about me, I guess. <laughs> Number 30. If we went to a store to buy a couch and both of us like different couches, would you still go with my pick? Depends. On what? Like, if I liked a certain one and you liked another one, would you be like, okay, we can get yours? Probably, because you're never going to like the one I pick. I'd be like, okay, I'll pick the couch, you can pick the table. I'd compromise. 
Because I like Baroque style couches. Like the one you have in your living room, but like dark and more goth. But like, I like the, like that long love seat with all like the intricate woodwork and stuff. And you'd probably just pick like a leather couch, right? Okay. Mm. See, I like fancier furniture and you like more minimalist furniture. I like more so modern stuff. That's what minimalist is. Oh. So I just feel like we could never agree on furniture probably. 31. Is sex about constantly pushing the boundaries or playing by the rules? There's rules? Yeah, I was gonna say, what rules are there? Is there, like, ten command commandments of, of doing it? Like, thou shalt not do missionary more than, like, twice a week or something. Okay, you got 200 pumps in this position, 300 in the other one. Like, there's no rules. Like, I'm sorry. So, wait, so, are you, like... Fine, so are you not about, like, the traditional rules, and you're more about, like, the Fifty Shades of Grey boundaries? I mean, I'm not gonna go off the fucking deep end, but... <laughs> I think it's a blend of doing what you want and not going over the top. Number 32, how often would you want to go out on a date with me in a month? I go with you every day. You? Every day. Number 33, what is your biggest sexual turn off? Okay, yeah. So, um, I would say, like, because it's not that sexual really, but some people don't know how to make out or whatever. I don't know if it's because I was barely in high school or something, but their tongue was all like lizard dart crap and it's just like, ugh, like too much saliva or something. It's just like, stop. Like, just get off my face. I don't even want to kiss you. It's gross. It really is. Or another thing that kind of happened. Um, when someone is just, I don't know. Like, they're not even checking your signals to see if you're in to it. And they just start like rubbing themselves all over you. I think for me it's like people that don't take into consideration what they just ate before they try and make out with you. Like or like cigarettes or what? Like or like garlic. Or like onions. anything like super gross like I don't know like strong stuff like that's why it's good, a good idea <laughs> if you're gonna make out with somebody offer them the same piece of gum or whatever it is that you're <laughs> doing because maybe a drink something because otherwise it's gonna like overpower you like I'm sorry, chocolate chip, or, I'm sorry, Thin Mints are not good to have before you make out with somebody that doesn't like chocolate and mint. That was a bad experience. I'm trying to think of one more, because I feel like there's one more that we could each say. Um... The fake moaning. Fake moaning? Like, all porn style, it's just... Why would you even bother? Know. Exactly. Like, why don't you just be quiet? <laughs> okay, um... What's another thing? Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. Mine aren't really that sexual. It's more like... General. Like, rated G. Number 34. What do you find sexiest about a person of the opposite sex? Hmm. For me... I don't know. It sounds weird. And this is kind of, like, really weird to say. <laughs> but... It's that line, like, damn it. The V-cut? The V-cut in the pelvic hip region. I don't know. Yeah, if they're slender enough. Or if they're, like, toned enough. Yeah. Yeah. You? I don't know. I'm always attracted to people's, like, mouths and their hands. I know that sounds freaking, like, creeper as hell. <laughs> you have a nice mouth and I like No, your hands. but the way... The way somebody smiles and their teeth and their mouth looks like it's a whole part of your face or whatever. I mean, if you're all like hillbilly crazy, like it's I'll not going to be attractive. snaggle tooth or what? <laughs> it's not going to be attractive. And hands are just like, I think it's because it's an artist thing or whatever because, you know, you just think about like hand stuff. <laughs> like I don't know how to go off that. 35. Oh god. What's your wildest sexual fantasy that you'd want to try with me? That's like not safe for you to do, so we're gonna skip Sorry. that one. 36, would you feel insecure if I spent a lot of time at work? We used to work together. Yeah. 
But even now, like, you don't really like when they pull me to work a whole lot. But do oh, you feel, I thought you meant like you feel if you... insecure that I'm always at work that I might be like doing something else. I read the question. I understood wrong. I thought it meant would I be insecure if you started coming by my work all no, the time? No, it's like that whole thing where I have to work late tonight type oh. of thing. No, I wouldn't feel insecure. It just makes me feel like murpy because I get bored by myself. That's it. I just don't like it because I get bored. Well, you want to be a school teacher, so it's not like. Hey, I have to stay late tonight. Like, no, you're gonna be done by four, typically. Well, unless I have, like, parent-teacher night or something. Yeah, but how many times a year is that? Like, like two. 37. How I'm not answering that. Okay. We're gonna skip that one. 38. If you were convinced that I was making a bad decision, what would you do about it? Tell you? Yeah. I would convince you? I wouldn't even make a decision without talking to you about it, because I always need to ask about everything. Pretty I, much. I give pretty good advice. Yeah. You give good advice, too. But it's not me. 39. Do you like babies? How many kids would you like to have someday? I'm kind of, like, on the fence about kids right now. I'm just, like, I work with juveniles, so I'm, like, I don't even want to deal with you right now. I do like children. Um, I don't know. As f it's, I'm, it's kind of weird because I used to volunteer-ish at, um... So what do you call it? Like I guess the Sunday school at my church when I was younger and I used to um, hang around the kids there and of course most of the time when the kids go to church they're gonna be a little more well behaved than probably some who oh, don't. Like that's not to stereotype anybody who doesn't go to church but most of the time their parents are gonna be very like strict and they're gonna be well behaved so those kids were fine. But I've also been around kids who are just screaming and they're yelling and they're throwing and some six-year-old one time at the mall told me to like fuck off or something it's true and i'm like where the hell's your mom like i didn't say that but as far as having kids um i don't know i'm on the fence about it my parents are always asking me about it my grandparents are always asking me about it because it's a culture thing in my culture i'm pretty much like an old hag like i should have had kids already because people around here get pregnant by like 15 16. Pretty much. and they get married by like 18 19. But as far as kids, like, I don't know, because like, I'm terrified. If to we were to have kids, I would say, like, I'd two. I'd say two. Yeah. Two, because I was an only child, and it was <laughs> all right, but then you're just... It was there. me and Katie, and that's enough. Number 40, when was the last time you disliked me? When was the last time I disliked you? I disliked you in my dream. That was it. I honestly can't remember. 41. <clears throat> if someone attractive exchanges glances with you at work, would you tell me about it? I don't work with anyone. I mean, I'm not working, I'm just a student, so. And people exchange glances all the time, like, what the hell does that even mean? Like, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure, like, I would tell you if somebody, like, put a move on me or something. Yeah, it's one thing putting a move, but... If it's just, like... Just like, okay. hey, hey, and that's it. Like, who freaking cares? <laughs> sure. 42, what's the craziest thing you'd be willing to do for me? I don't know, I'd probably give you, like, an organ. An organ? Yeah. Like, if we were a match or something and you needed, like, part of, like, a kidney or something. I'd take a bullet. I think that's not crazy, but... That's pretty crazy, I mean, people say they would do it, but I don't know if they'd actually do it. I don't know. I always have this, like, <laughs> lingering fear whenever I go somewhere that... And this is why... I don't think I've ever explained it. This is why I don't like having my back to the door. I always have this thing that somebody's <laughs> gonna come in freaking crazy and gonna want to shoot up the place. And that's why I hate having my back to the door. I'd rather see it coming, be able to react, and maybe even take care of the situation myself. But that's... I, get, I don't think I've ever told you that. Right? No, you never tell me. The only thing that makes me freaked out is walking, like, in not very populated places and, like, in darker areas by myself. Even walking from my, like, literally, my car is right here and the garage opening is, like, there. Like, it's not even that far and I don't even like walking there because my neighbor is weird and there's just a lot of women being kidnapped around our area. And people are freaking crazy, and I don't want to end up being sex trafficked, so there. Number 43, what kind of parent do you think you'd be? Okay, yeah. 
So, I don't think I'd be a good parent because... <clears throat> like, okay, first of all, I'm freaking nervous all the time. I have, like, an anxiety thing. And to have... To care and be so responsible for somebody else and then you don't even know what they're doing like now that i'm older i can understand why my mom is like all neurotic and stuff about what i was doing when i was younger like you don't know what they're doing you don't know who they're with the person they're with could be like a total asshole and it's just i would be thinking about that all the time and the world's just so messed up like that's why i don't even know if i want to have kids because the world's already like overpopulated and there's a bunch of crazy people and yeah i think i'd be kind of a strict parent just from the background of work that i come from <laughs> since i deal with juvenile like delinquents i see the worst of it so i have to put up with you know being cursed at being you know told off i have to tell them i have to kind of put them in their place a lot of the time because i think they're you know you can't touch me whatever so like for me be being in that workplace i see the worst of kids so for me, there would always be that fear, like, I don't want you to turn out that way. And I've seen, like, how crappy their home situation is. But I think I'd be a good parent, but I think I could be a little strict, depending on how I kind of change my views after working in my field for a few more years. 44. When do you think a person is ready for marriage? I think you are ready when you, like, know it for sure. Like, for example, my old college roommate got married after meeting a girl for two weeks, and they're still <laughs> together, and they're very happy. Well, and, how many years is it now? Like, two? Uh, probably more like three now. Um, Man, this is good. But I think you know when you meet that person, and then it's a matter of time. And as far as, like, what you really want your wedding to be, if you want a wedding at all, mm -hmm. um, you just kind of have to plan it out. And if it feels right, then go for it. Nobody can tell you any different, really. I think mine's probably more not like emotional. Mine's actually probably more logical, which it doesn't make sense to me. But um, a lot of my friends, or like people I went to high school with, I still kind of like keep in contact with them. They're almost all married, or they all have kids, whatever. And they're our age, which is like 22, 23. But they got married about a year or so ago. They're all married super young, like I said. It's the culture around here. Um, people get married really young, and I honestly feel like you shouldn't get married. Like, this might be kind of messed up. Everyone's probably going to disagree with it. I don't think you should get married until you're financially secure, because, yeah, like, what? We get an apartment, and then I don't have a job, and he has his job, and then he pays for everything, and we can't afford crap? Like, why would we even do that? If we can't get married and, like, have enough money to buy food, pay the rent or the house, whatever, and support ourselves i just feel like you shouldn't get married if you can't support yourselves so you don't want to be like with your parents and you're married because that's not that great i mean unless that's how your family is where everybody lives like in a big house whatever um and i feel like you shouldn't get married unless you've been together maybe like a couple years i think because... it takes at least three years to get really get to know somebody yeah because living with somebody too like, okay, your roommate got together with that person in two weeks, and, like, they happened to luck out and, like, still be together. Yeah. But what if she was completely weird and crazy and jealous, and he didn't figure that out till after they were married? Yeah. Like, she never wants him to leave the house, you can't go out with your friends, I want you to stay home, and I want to be a stay-at-home person, so you have to work all the time to support me. Like, I don't know. You, I just feel like until you know the person, until you're financially secure, and until like your relationship is mature enough and bleh, bleh, sorry relationship is mature enough like you both can you know how to communicate you know how to compromise you know how to like make decisions whatever um then you should be good all right number 45 what's the one thing about me you'd like to change i think i'd like to change like how stressed <clears throat> out you get like over school and stuff like that that's like the only thing that I would change, just because I think it would make things a lot easier and make you happier. I don't mean to be so difficult. I know. I'm just saying, like, it's, I mean, it's partially the school's fault and everything, but, like, I feel like well, it, it stresses you out. Well, it runs in my family. Out. It's yeah. like a biological thing. I just feel like it, it stresses you out really easily. Probably just not be all shut down for hours after work, because then I feel like I can't talk to you. Yeah, I can't help that either. Like, I there's, like, a completely different person when I go into work as... 
because I kind of have to shut off, like shut down emotionally, because I can't be the same person that I am around juvenile delinquents that I am around regular people and around you guys. Um, I have to treat them almost as if they're convicted criminals, which technically they kind of are in a sense. But with, with them being juveniles, it's a totally different game. So for me, like I have to just shut everything down, enter like a mode of get your stuff done, do it professionally, um, you know, watch your ass because these kids are, these kids are gonna try everything in the book to try and get you in trouble, or you know whatever. So for me, like I have to kind of get in that sense of mind, and then I have to stay in it for eight hours plus, and then when I get off of work, it takes me a while to kind of come down from that. So. I can understand that. Like, she'll tell me sometimes, like, why, like, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, nothing's wrong. I'm just, like, I, I'm still, you know, kind of tensed up and shut off from having to be that way for so long. 46. In an argument, whose side would you take, me or your mother? What would you argue about? She's, like, in love with you. Oh, no, no, no. It's saying, like... Oh, like if me or my mom was arguing? No, I think it's saying like if... Okay, from your perspective, if me and your mom were arguing. I know, that's why I said, what would you oh. argue about? She's like in love with you. But let's say we were. Know, Which side it, would you take normally? I guess normally? it depends on who it is. Or, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're arguing about, but I'd probably take your yeah. side just because. Ditto. What, would you, what do you think we would argue about? I think we would argue about something wedding-wise. I don't know. Like, not like a full-on argument, but you could see me probably being like passive-aggressive, like, uh, I think it should be this way, or whatever. Yeah. 47, would you relocate for love? Sure. Why not? Well, I'm gonna leave here, so pretty much. 48, would you be open to disclosing all your health issues to me all the time? Well, that's kind of stupid if you don't. Because if you don't tell them and then, boop, you die. Then it's kind of like, well, what the f what, what the do you hell mean? Happened? Like, if I was diabetic and then didn't tell you? Yeah, or like if I had, <laughs> I don't even know the name of it, where like you have like the. Narcolepsy? Isn't that loss of sleep? No, that's when oh, you seizures. fall asleep randomly. Oh. Like, I could be typing and then all of a sudden like pass out and fall asleep. No, no, no I was thinking about the one with the seizures. <laughs> Epilepsy? Yeah, that one. If I had that and I didn't <clears> tell you about it, then it would just be irresponsible of me not to tell you. Um, but yeah. 49. If you're having a bad day, would you want me to leave you alone or spend time with you and cheer you up? What do you think? I don't know. Like, most of the time when I'm having a bad day, I get into, like, a mood and then I'm just like, I want to be alone. But then you end up coming over anyway. But then it, like, fixes it. Yeah. So, like, even though I'm pretty much like, leave me alone, probably somewhere deep inside I'm probably like, just come over. Like, for me, like, if I'm really pissed off, like, I've had a shit day... <laughs> I need to be left alone for probably like an hour after, you know, I settle down and everything. I don't think you've even told me that though. Well, I never really have like crap days typically, but if I did have a really shitty day, I would probably want to be left alone for about an hour, hour and a half, and then let me come to you because it's not anything that you did wrong. I'm just pissed off about whatever happened. So for me, it's like I need some time to cool off and then I'll come to you. Like that's just how I am. Like, if I- if people try and force it out of me, that's when I- I get even more pissed, like... That's just how it is. You know? Alright, you, you, so. oh, you kinda said the same thing, right? Yeah. And last one. What's more important? Sexual chemistry or spending time together? Spending time together? You can't just wham bam, thank you ma'am, and then expect everything to but work that, out. But that kind of question doesn't really go together, it's either like... I don't know. Like, why are you in a relationship if you don't have chemistry? Yeah, I mean, that kind of goes that hand That question in doesn't really make sense to me, because... It would be some- It would be something like, what's more important, spending time together, or... Making sure you do well at school or your job. Like, that would make sense in a question. Yeah. But this is kind of like... Having sexual chemistry, or... But, or maybe okay, it's saying, is it more like important? romantic chemistry. Like... Like, kind of friend- No, or friend. what if it's saying, like, is it more important to spend time together doing stuff, or is it more important to, like, have a sexual life? 
I think that's what it's asking. Yeah. Is it more important well, to make sure you have... What if it's like you have a good time sexually versus a good time all the time, no matter what you're doing? Because some couples are like that. They just like hook up and then it's like great. But then when they spend time together, it's like complete shit. And then other times it's like you can be completely <gasps> good like on friends. Sex in the City, there's like this one thing where she's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, the sex is great, but we can't talk yeah. or something. Like, something they like can't that. even hang out. Like, if you're attracted to the person physically, but not... Intellectually. Intellectually, friendshiply. Because, like, honestly, like, you have to be best friends in order for it to work. You can't just, like, be attracted to the person. We weren't then... best friends, though. No, but we became best friends. Through our conversations and everything. That's how it should start out. It shouldn't be like a one night stand like, hey, you wanna hang out? Like, no. Like you should get to know the person first before you make that commitment. Or at least in a relationship. If you just want sex, then go for it. Whatever. Then you should just get like a friend person. You a, shouldn't uh, really be in a relationship. FB. Yeah.